Instagram and welcome back to Live Laugh Birds, where we live and laugh with birds. You guys, my Feather Fan merch is available on my store. It's got all of my birds on it, so if you guys would just go check it out. So today, guys, I'm going to be talking about some common mistakes that bird owners make. If you are making some of these mistakes, do not feel bad. Everyone makes mistakes. This is just an opportunity to improve your bird's quality of life. I made these mistakes when I was starting out, especially if you're a beginner bird owner. Everyone has to start somewhere, and everyone will make mistakes at the start. So the first mistake that a lot of newer bird owners make is feeding birds an all or mostly seed diet. If you go to a pet store, they're probably going to sell and recommend a seed mix. And it seems like a normal thing to feed birds, right? Birds eat seeds. When you think of bird food, you think of seeds. And a lot of people are like, oh, it's natural for birds to eat seeds. Birds eat seeds in the wild. And yes, it is true that a lot of parrot species do eat seeds and nuts in the wild. Cockatiels and budgies in particular, they eat a lot of grass seeds. So it should be good for them to eat seeds, right? Wrong. You can never compare a wild bird to a pet bird. You can't forget the fact that wild birds fly for miles every single day just to find their food. And a pet bird cannot compare to that. Your bird can never get the same amount of exercise in a house as a wild bird does flying free outside, no matter how long your bird spends outside the cage and no matter if your bird is fully flighted or not. They are never going to be burning that same amount of calories as a bird in the wild does. So the problem with feeding a pet parrot a seed diet is that seeds are high in fat and a pet parrot is not burning off those extra calories so they end up becoming overweight and developing fatty liver disease. So you guys might know that Bluebell is my first bird and I got her at the age of nine. This is Violet by the way, not Bluebell. They do look similar, they're both blue budgies. But Bluebell was on a seed diet for the first year of her life before I researched birds and knew what was appropriate. I followed the pet store advice. The pet store gave me a bag of seeds and said that was what's good for birds. And I did not know that seed diets were bad until I took Bluebell to an avian vet for a checkup a year later where they discovered that she was very overweight. You may notice that Bluebell looks a little bit chubbier than my other two budgies, Violet and Pearl, and that is because she has a lipoma, which is a cluster of fatty cells that actually never went away, even though she's been on a healthy diet with lots of exercise for many years. So an all seed diet is extremely unhealthy for a pet parrot, and instead you should be giving your bird as much variety in their diet as possible. I have an entire video on what you should be feeding your bird, and I will include that link in the description, but the main things that you should be feeding your bird are a variety of fresh vegetables, high quality pellets, a little bit of fruit, some cooked grains, and sprouted seeds. Sprouted seeds are a lot healthier than dry seeds and they're actually much similar to what birds are actually eating in the wild. The most important thing is making sure that your bird is getting lots of vegetables and pellets in their diet because a lot of people will just leave an open bowl of seeds in their cage all day long for your bird to eat whenever they want. When in reality, dry seed mixes should only be used as treats in smaller quantities for training, for taming, to get them back in their cage at night, or in foraging toys so they actually have to work for their food. It is a really good habit to make seeds a reward for your bird because when you are training them or when they're foraging, you want something that your bird is gonna be motivated to work for instead of just their normal everyday food that they get all the time. Moving on from seed diets, the next mistake that a lot of beginner bird owners make is keeping their bird in a cage that is too small. And that is a very easy thing to do if you ever went to a pet store. A lot of people will go to pet stores and buy all of their bird supplies in one trip, but in reality, you should have your cage all set up before you bring your bird home. Unless it's a specialty bird store, most pet stores don't even have cages that are big enough for any bird. Most pet stores have small tabletop cages in their stores because they're easy to store on shelves, and big cages are just not very convenient to have lying around. They take up a lot of space. They're not practical for most stores, and stores are going to try to sell you whatever they have in stock, even if it's not appropriate for that animal. Guys, it might not look like I have a bird on me right now. Every single video, what are you doing? Most of the time you should really plan on buying your cage online and you should always buy your cage before you bring your bird home. You should have it all set up, you should already have your supplies and everything like that. It is very common to keep birds in cages that are just way too small. With small birds, a lot of people keep them in small tabletop cages that they can just pick up and carry right outside. That should not be your bird's cage, that is a carrier. In the wild, birds fly for miles every single day and no cage can compare to that, but at least give your bird a flight cage. Don't get one that is tall and narrow. Birds fly from side to side, so a cage that is 30 inches long and only 18 inches tall is much better than a cage that is 18 inches wide and 30 inches tall. 
And please, please do not keep your bird in a round cage like Tweety Bird. Those cages never provide the amount of space a bird needs, and they also have no corners. Rectangular cages have corners so birds can hide in them if they feel threatened, but in a round cage they don't have those corners so they actually feel scared in them. Now another thing that a lot of people don't look into is that cages for large parrots like macaws are often way too small as well. I know those cages look huge and they take up a lot of space, but macaws have huge wingspans and very long tails, so they need a very large amount of space. In comparison to the size of a macaw, if you're keeping a macaw in a four foot by three foot wide cage, that is the same as keeping a budgie in a 14 by 10 inch cage. You need a lot of space for all those toys and perches that they need, or else there's not gonna be enough enrichment in there for them. And then there's also the question of how long your bird's gonna be spending inside their cage. If you go to school or you work a nine to five job, your bird's gonna be spending a significant amount of time inside their cage. So you really wanna have a lot of space for them and lots to do in there. The next mistake, which is a really sad one, is not letting your bird out of the cage regularly and keeping your bird in the cage most of the time or all the time and treating them more like a decoration. This one just makes me really sad because a lot of people still view birds as caged pets, as non-interactive, as just something pretty to look at, but birds are so much more than that. If you ever watch my birds especially, they are crazy and they're a lot of work and they do get all over the place but they need to come out of the cage, they need to explore, and don't you want to bond with them? If you got a bird, you want to have a bond with them. Parrots are extremely social animals. They bond very closely with their owners if you tame them right. And I know that it's going to be hard to tame them at first, especially if you have a bird that hasn't been socialized, but they're just so amazing and you shouldn't get a bird if you plan on keeping it in a cage all the time. If you're someone who goes to school or if you work a nine to five job, Yes, you can still have a bird, but you should plan on having the bird out whenever you can, whenever you're home, because they just need a lot of interaction. They need socialization, they need exercise, and they need to be out of the cage. All parrots need to be out of their cage for several hours a day, so include them in everything you do. Have them out as much as you can. Spend time with them, but you actually don't have to directly interact with them for all of those hours that they're out of the cage because they do need to be independent as well. So have a play stand for them, for them to play with toys and forage and have a food dish outside of their cage. They should be spending as much time outside of their cage as possible. If you don't have enough time to spend with a bird, then don't get a bird. They are social animals and there are plenty of pets that you can get that don't require the same amount of time that a bird does. The next mistake that bird owners make also goes along with this, and that is giving up when taming your bird and not taking the time, not having patience, basically getting a bird and then they're scared of you and then you just decide not to take them out of their cage anymore because you can't work with them. The thing is, parrots are prey animals, so if you get one that has not already been socialized, they will take a lot of time and patience to tame them. Every single bird is different and it can take months for certain birds to warm up to you if they've had a traumatic past or if they have not been socialized. So please do not give up, keep trying, and they do not deserve to live their lives in a cage just because you don't have the patience to work with them. This is something that happens a lot with budgies in particular because they are small, they're easily spooked, they tend to be more skittish and a little more difficult to tame than a lot of other parrot species. I have an entire video on how to tame your bird with Violet when I brought her home and she was scared of me, so make sure to go check that out. But in the video, it does look like a very short process because obviously I had to cut footage in order for it to be a 15 minute watchable YouTube video. In reality, the taming process is very repetitive, so you're gonna end up doing the same steps over and over again before they're comfortable enough to move on to the next step. Another thing, if you don't wanna go through a super long taming process that takes months and months of patience, then when you're out there looking for a bird, choose a bird that chooses you. If you're out there meeting birds that you could potentially bring home, then see if one steps up onto your hand from the start and maybe that's gonna be the one that you bring home. The next mistake is forcing a bird to do something that they don't wanna do. That is also known as using a flooding method. And an example of this can be taming a bird by holding them in your hand and just waiting until they stop struggling because they know that they can't get away from your hand so they get used to it. But in reality, they still are not used to your hand. 
This is something that will make your bird lose trust in you. And if you break your bird's trust, it is going to be harder to gain it back. So you're gonna to have to start over and you do not want your bird to go through that either. It is very stressful for them. Another example of this is forcing your bird to step up by pushing your hand into their chest. Again, this is something that's gonna make your bird even more scared of you. The next mistake is using the wrong type of perches in your cage. Nearly all bird cages come with dowel perches. Dowel perches are these smooth, straight, long wooden perches that go across the entire cage. They're very convenient, but they are very, very bad for your bird's feet. Because dowel perches are so smooth and they're the same width along the entire perch, because they are manufactured to be that way, when a bird sits on a dowel perch, their feet are always in the same exact position. Those pressure points that your bird's feet are coming in contact with the perch are the same and they do not change because the perch has no variation in it. And when that happens, those pressure points develop sores and those sores develop into infections over time and that's what bumblefoot is. With even more time, your bird can develop arthritis because their feet are always in the same position and they don't get any exercise. So you wanna have lots of natural wood perches inside of your bird's cage. In the wild, bird's feet get a lot of exercise because birds are always perching on different surfaces. Another type of perch that you should mostly avoid are sand perches and sandpaper perch covers. Sand perches are very rough. They're meant to trim your bird's nails, but they often end up irritating the bottom of your bird's feet. If you have to use a perch that trims your bird's nails, then you should use one that is smooth on top and only has sands on the side of the perch where your bird's nails actually go. So the next mistake is using the wrong types of toys in your cage. And let's get this out of the way for people who might not know. Parrots absolutely need toys. They are necessary. And that's another mistake is not giving your bird toys at all. Toys are not going to make a difference if your bird does not play with them. A lot of pet stores sell mostly plastic toys and most birds do not really play with plastic toys all that much. They might fiddle with them here and there, but they're not going to get as much out of them as they would with a toy that they can actually destroy and shred, which is what parrots do in the wild and what they really need to do. There's nothing wrong with having a few plastic toys in your cage if your bird does enjoy them, but the problem is when you don't have shredding toys in your cage as well and you only have plastic toys. Parrots need to shred, it's a natural behavior. Another type of toy that your bird does need is foraging toys. Foraging toys are toys that make your bird work for their food like they do in the wild. Another problematic toy that a lot of bird owners use are mirrors. Mirrors can make your bird very aggressive and hormonal because they think that the bird in the mirror is their mate. Mirrors are also just very confusing to your bird. Even though parrots are extremely smart, they still cannot recognize that their reflection is not another bird. So it does cause a lot of problems when they think that the reflection is their mate. They become defensive against anyone who touches their mirror. They might not even wanna come out of their cage anymore and it can cause a lot of problems. They can actually become obsessed with looking at themselves in the mirror all day long and they might not wanna play with their other toys or interact with you. So it's really better to avoid mirrors even if your bird is not having problems because those problems could always occur. If your bird is not having problems and then hormone season comes around, your bird can all of a sudden become very aggressive when you try to take them away from their mirror. So going along with that, the next very common mistake is in one way or another, hormonally stimulating your bird. Hormonally stimulating your bird can cause two main problems. In female birds, it can cause them to lay unwanted eggs and even become chronic egg layers where they don't stop laying eggs. Laying eggs takes a lot of nutrients, specifically calcium, out of their body in order to form that egg. And unless you know exactly what you're doing and you're an experienced breeder, you should not be encouraging your bird to lay eggs. It can be fatal to your bird if they get egg bound, which is where an egg gets stuck in their system as they're trying to lay it. Now the second problem with hormonally stimulating your bird is aggressive behavior. And this can occur in both male birds and female birds. And the aggression can be both towards you or other people. So there are several ways that people can accidentally hormonally stimulate birds. And the most common one is providing a nesting space for your bird. And that can often be a happy hut or a bed that you put in your bird's cage. You should not use those. Besides being a nest, happy huts have a lot of other problems and they're really dangerous. So if you're still using one, take it out of your cage. They can cause blockages if your bird swallows the fibers. They're very fuzzy and it's very easy for your bird to do that. So they're just dangerous, don't use them. Another thing is nesting boxes. Do not put a nest box in your bird's cage if you're not an experienced breeder who knows what they're doing just because you think 
Your bird wants to nest. Do not let your bird go into small dark corners because those also simulate nests because parrots nest in tree hollows in the wild. Another way that hormonal stimulation can occur is petting your bird all the way down their back or under their wings. And this is really common in cockatoos especially because cockatoos love being petted under their wings. But you are actually stimulating them when you do that. They, you're bringing your bird on and they're just gonna end up getting frustrated. So this next one is controversial, but I'm still going to say it, and that is clipping your bird's wings. I believe in letting birds be fully flighted. All of my birds are fully flighted, and I have a video on the benefits of flight and the whole wing clipping debate if you wanna go check that out. But what I mean in the context of wing clipping being a mistake is when you're doing it for your own convenience. If your bird is flying around the house and for some reason you don't want your bird flying around the house, if say you think your bird's gonna fly into a wall and that's why you're clipping them, if you just think it's necessary, those are all reasons that should never be used as why you clip your bird's wings. Another big one that is also clipping for convenience is clipping your bird's wings just to take them outside instead of taking the time to harness train your bird or just using a carrier. That in itself is not safe and so many clipped birds fly away because a breeze catches them and they get spooked and that's all it takes for them to take off into a tree and then they don't know how to get down. Wing clipping should only ever be used as a last resort in situations that you cannot control. But other than that, birds deserve to be able to fly. If you got a bird, they are a flying animal and there are so many pets that cannot fly. Clipping wings so your bird doesn't fly into windows and walls. Birds do not normally fly into windows and walls. If they are experienced flyers that know the layout of the house, you can teach your bird not to fly into windows and to know that windows are there by taking your bird up to the window and tapping them against it. Which means that the first few times your bird is flying around your house after being clipped and their feathers grow back, they might fly into things a few times just as part of their learning process. That doesn't mean that they're never going to learn how to fly properly. And you can teach your bird how to fly by using recall training and slowly building up the distance that they're able to fly. You can also use recall training to teach a flighted bird to fly down to your hand and descend so if they ever do end up in a tree, they know how to fly back down to you, which clipped birds do not know how to do. So if they ever do fly away, they would not be able to get back to you. It's just not an excuse to say, I don't want my bird to fly around the house and get into things because birds fly, that's what they do. They're flying animals. Now the last mistake that bird owners make is not having an avian vet and not looking for an avian vet before they decide to bring their bird home. If your bird gets sick, then what's going to happen to them? Birds depend on you for everything and they can't just take themselves to the vet. So you really should be prepared to take your bird to the vet if something goes wrong. This is a living being that depends on you for everything in their life. So before you decide to bring one home, make sure that you can properly take care of one. So that is it guys for today's video. Thank you guys so much for watching. I hope you enjoyed and I hope you learned something to give your bird a better life. Don't forget to subscribe and I will see you guys in my next video.